Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another limited edition exclusive. This is the Christmas 2022 exclusive from Art Impressions and Simon Says Stamp. And we're gonna be creating an acetate card that creates an amazing effect. This is a fully, uh, a full acetate A2 size card, I guess I should say. This is the Simon Says Stamp and Art Impressions exclusive for 2022, meaning when it's gone, it's gone. This is, of course, the very popular art impressions images of the ladies. They're all decked out in their Christmas Christmas finest singing carols, it looks like. I am going to stamp this image with VersaFine ink on Bristol Smooth cardstock and color in the image with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I will be listing all the marker colors in the description below the video here on YouTube as well as over on my blog. You can always find the coordinating blog post for the video by following the link in the description below. So um, yes, did I accidentally color in part of her hair with my gray marker? It is not until I'm completely done coloring her coat that I realize I did that. Luckily, the gray is light enough that I'm able to color, color, cover up, or color over it, I guess I could say her that hair section with some browns in a little bit but I am starting with the kind of furry trim on her coat and hat using platinum brown gray tint in a blender um, I want it to just have some shading but of course I want it to maintain the look of a white trim and with zigs especially as these are water-based markers i would highly recommend anything that you want to color in red or pink to color that last now i will be coloring with my reds as i'm working but you will notice that i colored in the trim on the coat i'm going to color in the skin anything like that i'm going to go ahead and color first and then i'm going to come back and start adding in the red because for the most part I don't believe it's touching anything that I'm going to be coloring. The tips of these markers do tend to want to kind of grab hold especially of that red and pull it into other areas and so I do try to uh, save that for very very last. The very final thing we will do today is add a little texture to the skirt on the the lady dressed as an elf and then the coat um, that I'm coloring right now actually we're gonna do like a little cross hatch pattern I'm using carmine red and light carmine for her coat you'll notice that uh, lots of bright color are gonna be used here I knew I wanted to do a very quick and easy distress oxide inked ink blended background in some bright blues and I want my image to pop now the thing about this particular image, it is the image only, no coordinating dye. I did use the Brother Scan and Cut to cut out my image. So when you see the die cut image here in a little bit, please know that I achieved that with the Scan and Cut. You can also fussy cut this if you want to, or you can mask it off very easily. Well, I shouldn't say very easily. I say masking off easily like it's easy, but you, you would need to stamp it on some masking paper or a post-it or something of that nature, cut it out, fussy cut it, and place it over the image and then do your ink blended background. So maybe I shouldn't say easy. Maybe I should say it's slightly time consuming, but the result is worth it. Um, but today I did opt to go ahead and just cut it out with the Brother Scan and Cut. I've had lots of questions about the Brother Scan and Cut. Um, the one I have, I've had for about a year now. I guess it's almost been exactly a year. I generally only use it if the stamp set I'm using doesn't have a die, like the stamp set here, or if I maybe don't have the die yet, sometimes I get product ahead of the release uh, to have projects ready for a release. And when I don't have anything, or don't have the coordinating die, pardon me, and I don't want to fussy cut because we know how I feel about fussy cutting, I will use the scan and cut to cut it out so it kind of mimics the look of what a die would do. So we are moving on to the second lady. I still have a little bit left to color on that first that first lady, but we'll just save that, her like her tights and her little elf booties here for a second. 
and I am going to do a bright green for her, this elf dress. And then instead of like a red and white stripe for the tight, tights, which I do think would be really cute, I wanted to pull in some pink. So I will be using peach pink and sugared almond pink for the pink uh, stripes on her hat and her tights. And then pulling in carmine and light carmine for the red. And the green of her dress is going to be green, light green, and yellow green. I often will use light green and yellow green, but I did pull in a little bit of the darker green here, which really helps add some great detailing and shading. You'll notice after I blend and color everything out, I do go back with my darkest marker and kind of add in back in some of those darker shaded areas. Her little elf booties here are just so cute. They've got little jingle bells on the toes, which I think are super fun. The lady dressed as a Christmas tree, her slippers are actually presents. And I will admit to you guys that I did not notice that until I was almost finished and I happened to look at the package and I was like, oh, her her slippers are presents or shoes, whatever they are, are presents, which is kind of cute and funny. Now I'm going in on the tights and adding in the red, even though some of it's gonna be touching this tree, which I haven't colored yet, I think I'm gonna be safe, but I definitely don't wanna color anything light, like the trim on the jacket or the coat after I've done the red. I wanna do that, do the red and pink last. I love the addition of pink on this costume. I think it adds a lot of character and a lot of fun. This is a very coloring heavy project just because this image does have quite a bit of detail to it. The rest of the card is fairly simple, but the fun thing about it is it's an acetate overlay. So that means that this whole panel will actually be under the front flap of the card. I would love to know in the comments if you have created an acetate style card. I have done a few. I don't think I've done a full on acetate. I've done lots of acetate overlays in the last year or so, but I don't think I've done a full on acetate card in a few years. Um, did some several years ago, but haven't really done any and Simon Says Stamp came out in their um, November release with these A2 Top Fold Acetate cards. I couldn't be any happier. Already pre-cut, scored, folded, all that good stuff right for us. Already sized to work. Um, I just can't say enough. So all you have to do is decorate it. And I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on how to achieve a really cute layered design. Adding, I, I kind of blended her hair out too much, so I'm just going back in with my dark and adding a little bit more. Little mustard color for the buckle. And then the cuffs of her dress, I'm going to do a limey green, which is the yellow green color. Now for the Christmas tree, I wanna do green, but I wanna do a different green color combination. So I'm gonna use olive green and smoky yellow, I believe are the colors. And so this is gonna give us a little bit more of an olive green color. I like to go in with my dark first, and then we're gonna blend out with the lighter marker. So it's still gonna be kind of, you know, fun and colorful but provide us with a little contrast from the green of the elf costume right next to her. After I've outlined the tree, I'm gonna go ahead and blend out with my lighter color marker. And something else I wanna mention, you will notice, yes, I have it upside down as I'm coloring and blending. There is a reason for that because I don't want to drag my hand through what I've already colored. We, uh, oftentimes with these water-based markers like this, they stay wet a little bit longer than an alcohol ink marker and I don't want to smear anything. So I will rotate my paper quite often as I'm coloring to keep my hand out of anything that I've already done. Would have been smarter probably to work left to right. 
I did not. So uh, this is what we're stuck with. <laughs> Gonna go back in, um, I've got my beige and flesh color, and then um, gonna even pull in a little mid-brown. I use mid-brown and beige for the get girl in the middle, and beige and flesh color for the lady over on the right. So really, basically only using about four, well, three colors in a blender to achieve different skin tones and colors. Lips are a really pretty, I think it's a blossom pink color. I, the exact color is listed below. It's one of the newer colors, but I like it to just add a touch of color to the lips on these gals. A little pink haze for the cheeks. Carmine red for tongue. They're all singing some carols. Okay, after we have that, of course the bright or the ornaments on the tree are really a great opportunity to add in lots of color. The star at the top, I'm gonna to do mustard in the blender. I'm also gonna use mustard in the blender for the jingle bell on top of the hat and on the tip of the elf shoes. We're going to go through and just add bright bulbs all over the tree costume. So this is carmine and light carmine. We've got peach pink and sugared almond pink. We're gonna do some cobalt blue and light blue. And some bright yellow and yellow. And I did opt to go for a little bit brighter color than what I used for the star and the jingle bells. And then I decided instead of doing a contrasting color for her legs, like to make them tights, I'm gonna go ahead and color those in skin color. And I need to fill in anything I'm missing. So there's quite a few little areas still that I'm missing, like the little booties or elf shoes, uh, the hat, the songbook, all of those good things. So we got some bright lime green leggings with the red coat and then the red shoes. We've got our little jingle bells. Let's go ahead and do the hat. We're gonna do a nice dark green trim and then match the tights with the pink and red stripes and the mustard jingle bell up at the top. The songbook, I'm gonna use mustard in the blender. I just felt like I wanted it to stand out from the outfits instead of doing maybe a brighter color or something. I felt like the more neutral color blended in or blended in, just gave it that nice little contrast rather to all of the bright color going on in the rest of the design. So go down the spine of the book and kind of around the outer edges. And then we're gonna blend it out really, really nicely with the blender. Make sure and clean that tip of the blender off a lot. You can see down at the bottom of my panel, well, it's up at the top of the screen right now, but I clean off the tip of my lighter markers all the time so that I'm not dragging that darker color out into the entire image. So we're almost done coloring everything in. We just have, I think, legs and in, in the present slippers. And then I'm gonna show how I'm gonna decorate the front of the panel to make it look like these ladies, ladies are standing out in a winter snowstorm or in some falling snow. Maybe it's not a snowstorm, but rather some falling snow. And the slippers are gonna be some bright green, light green and yellow green with carmine and light carmine bows. And again, once I'm done coloring, I am going to die cut this with the Brother Scan and Cut.
We're going to grab the Falling Snow background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. This is a stamp background stamp that's been out for quite a while. It continues to be one of my favorites. I was looking just for some sort of a background stamp that had a falling snow feel to it. So anything with snowflakes, you could even just repeatedly stamp snowflakes if you wanted to. Lots of ways to achieve a similar look but I am going to take this then and I am going to place it in my Misty as well as this A2 sized acetate card. And here is what those cards look like. And I am going to kind of figure out where that's going to go. I haven't die cut it quite yet. And I'm gonna grab my Misty and figure that out. I'm also gonna look at all of the sentiments that come in this stamp set and figure out what I want to use to give me a really good idea of kind of how it's all going to go together. So let's pop our background here in the Misty. I do need to move it a little bit. I've got one of those sticky backgrounds in my Misty so that will help hold the card down in place. I want to make sure that the entire snowy background stamps all over the card so I'm going to move it kind of down away from the corner. And I'm going to use my very favorite cotton white stays on ink and make sure that I ink up this background really well. I think it's a really good idea to have the stays on reinker on hand to re-ink your ink pad. I don't have to do it every time or even every other time, but it's very good to have on hand when you need it. So then I'm gonna stamp that acetate cover. And that's going to be really cute, I think. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this out of my Misty. And then I'm going to take my card and I'm going to place it back in my Misty and I'm going to kind of play around with the different sentiments and any additional images that come in the set. There's the music notes, there's a snowflake, and then lots and lots of sentiments. And I'm going to see kind of what I think I want to do here. And we're going to be doing a layering of two different stays on colors. You definitely are going to want to do stays on on acetate so that it dries instantly. If you try to use another kind of ink, it's just going to keep smearing off. So stays on is the way to go. I'm going to use the uh, Fala -la, -la, La La Love sentiment and I'm also going to stamp the music notes. Um, before I do that, I am going to go ahead and die cut a couple of rectangular panels using basic rectangles from Simon Says Stamp. On one of them, I'm going to ink it up with peacock feathers and prize ribbon to create this snowy background that is really going to make our stamped falling snow pop. I always like a bright blue background and as I was coloring in the images from the Art Impressions Christmas 2022 limited edition stamp set, I kept in mind that I wanted to use this bright blue background so I picked colors that I felt like would really pop against the blue. I'm going to take the color almost all the way down to the bottom, but not quite. That way it gives the illusion of this the sky, but they're maybe standing in snow. So we leave it just a little bit white down near the bottom. I'm not going to do any additional distressing or anything like that for this because I really want the falling snow that we stamped on the front of the acetate card to take center stage and be our layering element. We'll clean up our work surface really quick. I'm going to pull my Misty back in and I'm just going to place that panel inside my card so I can get an idea of how it's going to look. I think that's going to look pretty awesome. Here is my image all die cut. Look at it against the bright blue of the sky. I think that's going to be super pretty. We're gonna pop our sentiment in place. We're gonna take our music notes and I am going to go ahead and stamp these in the black stays on color right on the front of the panel. And I will need to clean and move the music notes a few times. I did end up doing those about three times. And I love the look of the layered stays on ink on this cover. So let's go ahead and stamp this first one. Look how cute. 
think that's going to be perfect. I'm gonna clean my stamps, move the music notes, and stamp them two more times. I'm gonna move my card background down just a little bit um, so that I can stamp my music notes off the top of the card. So let's just move it down to the bottom of the Misty. I was only gonna do it twice and then I felt like, oh, I really feel like I need one more. I did leave a little room. So you're gonna notice that there's a little room between like the music notes and the fa la 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 love. That's because I want to stamp another sentiment from this Art Impression stamp set on a separate piece of paper and pop it up right there on the front. I'm going to go in with my green marker now and draw those stripes into the elf dress. I mentioned that a little bit earlier that once everything is really good and dry, I want to add in some extra detailing. And then we're going to take our carmine and we're going to go back and forth on both the coat and the hat and just add in some fun texture. This is one of my favorite things to do to add lots and lots of fun interest to images. And that looks good, okay. So now I am gonna go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of my panel. And we're going to adhere this inside of the card. Now, the problem with an acetate card, of course, is that you can see through. Adhesive is going to show through. So on the back of the card, it's going to be super obvious that there is some adhesive and it's really, it kind of makes it look bad. So when I die cut this rectangular panel using the basic rectangle die, and part of the reason I chose to use a die rather than just trimming it is that it's going to be the exact same size. So we're placing this panel inside of our card. We're going to glue our ladies in place to finish off our snowy scene. I'm just gonna cover the back of this with some liquid adhesive and gonna pop that in place it looks pretty good I love it it looks like they're out in the middle of falling snow and then on this other rectangle that's white I am going to place adhesive on the back of this we're gonna flip our card over and we're actually going to place this right on the back of the card and because this is a com this is a completely see-through card it's going to allow me to have a spot to handwrite a note to the recipient to uh, you know, stamp handmade by my name or something like that. Plus, it hides the adhesive inside of the or from the panel we placed inside the card. Gives it a very nice, clean, finished look. So that's on the very back of the card. Now we are going to take another sentiment from the stamp set and stamp that on white cardstock, but I want it to be a long skinny sentiment instead of one word on top of another. I'm gonna use a little post-it tape to mask off part of these sentiments and only ink up part of it. Stamp that. Hopefully get it as clean as possible. And then I'm gonna clean the stamp move the stamp, move, move it down a little bit so I stamp the word friends right after fab, you'll, us, which I think is a very cute, punny play on words. And it's going to be one long sentiment strip instead of, like I said, one on top of another, which I think will fit this design a lot better. I'm going to ink that up, stamp it, die cut it with a sentiment labels die from Simon Says Stamp, and then we will pop this up with some foam adhesive right on the front of the panel. Now, I will say you could go ahead and die cut a little rectangle and hide the adhesive 
on the inside panel of your card. I did not. I actually kind of forgot about it. I don't think it looks that bad, but you could always do that if you wanted to. So I have attached that in place. I'm going to finish my card with a couple of little heart accents on either side of the sentiment. I'm gonna open the card and I'm gonna take some of these little clay snowflake embellishments and we're going to add in some just little snowflakes here and there. About three on the right side, two over on the left. And that is gonna be it everyone. That's going to finish off this acetate layer card that just creates amazing detail and layering very, very easily. If you haven't tried an acetate card, definitely try one. They're super fun. And I think they're a great, they give a great presentation and the recipient will love it. Remember that this Art Impressions and Simon Says Stamp Christmas 2022 stamp set is only available while supplies last. So please click the link in the description below if you're interested in. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Simon Says Stamp products that you might be interested in. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. We would love to see you over there as part of our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making or paper crafting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.